Good morning. I'm Carlton Sharp, pastor of Faith Christian Center Church right here in the beautiful city of Beaumont, Texas. I want to welcome you to what's happening in our neighborhood. And today my special guest is Miss Carolyn Guidry. Welcome, Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Hey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Carolyn LeBlanc Guidry. I was born and raised right here in Beaumont, Texas, and I am a product of the Pear Orchard. <laughs> now, 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 you are one, you are the first African-American female uh, to have the position that you hold right now. That is correct. The first African-American, period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> period. <laughs> and what position is that you, that you hold? That is Jefferson County Clerk. Okay, okay. So now tell us a little bit about what the clerk does for the county. Well, actually, uh, my primary duty is to uh, maintain the records of the county. And those records go back to 1836 when the county was established. So we maintain all the records, and those records can contain your deed records, your marriage records, birth records, date records, uh, debt records, uh, all kind of records for the county. We even hold uh, cattle brands. Uh, I mean, you'd be surprised. We, we go back to the history of the county. Uh, we have records such as when uh, certain people of color could not even own land. Wow. Uh, you know, could not be deeded any type of land records. Uh, it's all kind of history in those records. Now, now one of the things that, that you're doing is you're digitizing all of those records uh, and bringing them up to date. Absolutely. You know, at one time, computers were non-existent. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so uh, computers were not even in the courthouse until the late 1980s. So up until then, people actually hand wrote records. And then, of course, typewriters came into play. So before computers came into play, everything was either handwritten or typewriter, you know, written. So those records have to be digitized. And we have volumes and volumes. In fact, I have a basement that's 5,000 square feet wow. with nothing but records in it. And, and you're taking each of those records and digitizing them? We're in the process of trying to digitize everything uh, in the courthouse to preserve those records. So about, about how, how many records you've already done so far? Well, you know, we didn't start until after I got to the courthouse and we're way behind times. And right now we've done probably over three million pages, but that's barely touching the surface for what we have to do. You, you've already digitized three million and, and you said that you're just skimming the surface right Oh, now? that is just skimming the surface of what we have to do. So how, how many records do you think or left, you know, oh, to, my to bring everything up to date. I can't even imagine, Pastor, how many <laughs> have left to do. Because, you know, all the records that we have to preserve, everything that predates 1950 are historical records. And not only do we have to digitize those, those books still have to be preserved. So wow. we still have to encapsulate all of those records and preserve those records in those books as well as digitizing those and getting them in a digitized format. So it's a process, it's a slow process, but not only do we have to digitize those and preserve them, you know, we have budget restraints because it takes money to do that. Yeah. So money and resources. <laughs> so you can only do so much at a time. Now, 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 now most people would, would see your office as the office that if I want to get married, I got to come see you. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So you, you, I mean, you give out the, the, the marriage certificates and yeah. then now, now it's an interesting process because when I, when I'm marrying somebody, I have to fill out the information that I'm the official that right. officiated their wedding and I have to send it back into, right. back to you. Right. So what happens with the license once we send it back to you? Well, once you send it back to us, we're going to record it. We're going to complete the uh, format when it was returned to us. And then we're going to scan it to make it a permanent record in our office and then we're going to return that original back to the Samaritan couple. So that way, if they ever lose that original, we always have that document. It becomes a permanent record in our office. Okay. And that's our function is to make sure that we have the permanent record, the official public records of the county. And that's our function as the county clerk. Now, you're not only dealing with records, but you're also dealing with the courts. Yes, we are. So, so tell us a little bit about what you do with the courts. Well, we actually have four courts. We have two criminal courts, and they are the misdemeanor courts. And we always tell people, you don't want to go there. <laughs> that, means, <laughs> that means that you've gotten in some type of trouble. Uh, it could be a, a DUI or 
uh, drive, you know, some kind of uh, misdemeanor. So you want to try to stay out of those courts. You don't want to see those judges. Uh, we also have civil courts, you know, where people file lawsuits for up to, I think, uh, under $500,000. You might get in one of those in the civil court. And then, of course, we have the, uh, the probate court, or the, uh, uh, which is under the county judge jurisdiction. And that's for the people that may have uh, filed like a uh, probate of will if someone dies or uh, may have a, a mental case or trying to get a guardianship over someone. So we do have jurisdictions over those courts and we maintain all of those records. I am the record keeper of the courts. And then as well as that, I'm over the commissioners, not over the commissioners court, but I also maintain the records for the commissioners court. So I have to actually appear or have someone on my behalf appear every time the commissioner's court meet. That is also my responsibility. So, so you're like the person who, who handles the minutes and all that kind of things of what, what's happening in, in any of those courts. That is that is, correct? That is correct. Now, do you provide anything else for the courts? Well, just all the records and uh, all the paperwork. That is our responsibility okay. to maintain those records and to make sure that we do have those records. And, you know, if a, if a judge is looking for something and we don't have it, then I'm going to be in trouble. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so now, now, not just the maintaining of records, but you also are responsible for all the, the elections that happen in our county. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, now, that, that's the big job. Uh, actually, I am the election administrator, and that is a position that was appointed to me by the commissioner's court. You know, not all counties, the county clerk does the elections. In some counties, some counties actually have an appointed election administrator, which is outside the jurisdiction of the county clerk. But it just so happens here in Jefferson County, that uh, job function has been appointed to me by the commissioner's court. As if you didn't have enough work to do with all of As if I don't have <laughs> enough work to do. You are absolutely right. <laughs> so that's a task that I have been tasked with by the commissioner's court. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, but, you know, elections... You know, it's very challenging, but I actually enjoy doing elections because it gives me an opportunity to meet the people and make sure that everyone has a right to exercise, you know, have the right to exercise the right to vote. And we want to make sure that no one is disenfranchised to vote. So I take that job very, very seriously as well as, you know, all the duties that I have. Now, now, now I got to say a few years ago, we were having some challenges with, with the, you know, when you first started, when you first started as the clerk, right. I mean, we were doing paper ballots. Right. We were actually on punch cards. When punch I first cards. Started. My very first election, <laughs> when I first got in office, my very first election, the first day I walked in was on the first day of a primary election. We were on punch cards faster. Now, now we didn't have we didn't have a Florida incident, but you know we were no, in, in, inspecting we the car to make sure if it was a punch or not a punch. Did no, we? but believe it or not, <laughs> they did have to secure a ballot box that year. <laughs> oh, that was a nightmare. But after that year, we went to electronic voting, and uh, we went we uh, went to a company called Election System and Software. And that is a name that was heard around the country. Yeah. Because everyone had problems with calibration issue. And I'm sure you heard these complaints all around Jefferson County. I punched Democrat and I got Republican. Or oh, I punched Republican and I got Democrat. And that went on and on and on. Well, I mean, I, I, I remember I remember some of the headlines and, and, and the blame was really given to you. Well, yeah, but you it know? wasn't just here in Jefferson County. Yeah. That was across the United States. But that was a and that's what people don't understand. That yeah, this was that a was a defect with the company and the machines themselves because it was a calibration issue that the company did not fix. Right, right. Yeah. And so, so from there, you moved on to a new a product that, yeah. that, that's more efficient. Right. But before we moved on to that new product, I don't know if you remember this, we made CNN News. No, no. Yes, we did. No. <laughs> yes, we did. We made CNN News that year. But uh, in, 20, uh, in 2015, uh, thank the commissioners, we were able to buy a new system, which were the Heart uh, Intercivic System. And since we've been on that system, I want to thank God and thank the commissioners. <laughs> uh, voting has been so much easier. Oh. 
<laughs> for my office and for the constituents of Jefferson County. Hold on, hold on, Kelly. I got to go back to the CNN <laughs> thing. I gotta, we, we made the national news. We made the national <laughs> Jefferson County was on the map for CNN News. Because, yes. of, because of the ESS? Be, because uh, of the ESS voting and because of the calibration issues and because of, you know, every time that you picked one party, when you straight party vote, it would go to another party. Yeah, we weren't the only ones though. It was across the it was across the United States this issue was happening, but we did make CNN news. We had so many complaints that <laughs> year. Oh my God! Now, now in, in, in 2013, you started a pilot program. Tell us about that pilot program. Oh you. yes, that that was the best thing that happened to uh, Jefferson County. I said that was the best thing since instant gravy. <laughs> Absolutely. That was the best thing since okay. instant gravy. Since instant gravy. <laughs> since instant gravy. That's the best thing since instant oh, gravy, Pastor. Uh, we started a pilot program here in Jefferson County that was allowed by the Secretary of State that allowed a voter, when they went to vote on election day, to be able to vote at any one of the polling locations, just as they did on early voting. Yes. And what that did was, if you went to vote you didn't have to vote in your precinct as you did before. Because a lot of times on election day, a voter would show up at one polling location right, and they right. were at the wrong place. Right. And that was very discouraging to some voters. Or they would show up at the last minute and didn't have time to go across town where they should have been voting. Mm -hmm. And then they would have to vote a provisional ballot. And you know, those provisional ballots most of the time did not count. Wow. You know, so then they're, votes were discarded, you know, their votes were not counted. So once we went to this pilot program, which meant that on election day, you can vote at any one of the polling locations, regardless of where you lived. That did away with all the provisional ballots, that did away with people showing up at the wrong polling location, and it just, just did away with all the chaos of where to vote on election day. It was the same thing as if you were early voting all through wow. the election period. Yeah, because, you know, it, I, I think it, it made it much yeah, easier. Yeah, it did. You know? So what started out as a pilot program, once we proved, proved to the Secretary of State that it worked for Jefferson County, we kept our numbers, we showed them where we were doing what we were supposed to do because we were all electronic. Uh, we implemented Wi-Fi, whereas... It was real-time voting. You cannot leave one polling location and go somewhere else because we were, we were uh, connected with Wi-Fi across the city, across the, the county, where when you voted, your vote was instantly marked. So if you left, say, John's Library and went to Rogers Park, that had already been marked in the system that you had voted. Now, now and, and is, is that really, is that considered a crime to try to to uh, vote in two locations after you, you, you know, you've already voted? Well, if you voted twice, it would, okay. be, a, okay. it would be a crime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. only if you voted twice, it would be a crime. You can try. <laughs> and we've had people to try. Really? But guess what? You won't get away with that here in Jefferson County because we're on our game here. So, so now, now, because of this new, that new program, uh -huh. you said the provisional ballots have decreased. Oh, tremendously, at least by 75%. Now tell the people what a provisional ballot exactly is. A provisional is. ballot is when you would show up at a polling location and say, for instance, at that time, if you were voting in the wrong polling location, you had to vote a provisional ballot. So we don't have those anymore. Now we still have provisional ballots if you show up at a polling location and say, we cannot find you on the voter registration roll, then you would have to vote a provisional ballot because we will not turn away any voter because sometimes the rolls could be wrong and it gives the voter registrar an opportunity to check to make sure that they cannot find you on the roll anywhere. So that's why you would vote a provisional okay. ballot. Now, I, I, on election night, I, I'll be watching the, the news and I see, you know, 45% of the ballots counted, and then they right. give you a percentage. I mean, is that real-time uh, 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 numbers that are coming out? Yeah, those are real-time numbers. And the reason the, you get those percentages is that because it depends on how the ballot boxes come in. You got to remember that right now we have 40 polling locations. So we have to wait until those ballot boxes come in across the, across the county. We have ballot boxes from Sabine Pass to wow. Nome to Rogers Park, to China. 
So it depends on when the ballot boxes come in, how we can count those ballot boxes. So it depends on how many come in out of those 40. So that's why you see the percentages. Now, now you're not just responsible for the, the county elections or, or the national elections, but they're the, the city and school uh, board and all that, you, you have right. that also. Right. Actually, I'm not responsible for those, but we do those as a courtesy to our political subdivisions. Uh, as county clerk, I don't really have to do those. If I was an election administrator, uh, I would. But because I'm a county clerk, I can contract them by choice. I contract them because, you know, I believe that we should help our counterparts. And it's a savings to them when we do it because, of course, we charge a lot less than a vendor would uh, to the political subdivisions. You know, and they are a part of the county, so we should help each other. So we always help the cities and the school district and the ports do their elections. Now, now you, you, I, I believe that you have made the decision that, that you're going to, you gonna do this one more, one more, one more election season. Oh, absolutely. You gonna get back in the oh, race. Ab oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I love. Uh, I this is my second career being county clerk, and I real I really love being Jefferson County clerk. It gives me an opportunity to, to serve the people here where I grew up. Uh, it, it it keeps me in touch, you know, with the people here. Uh, I think I've been able to help the people that come into the office, uh, give them a warm environment uh, to come into, and, you know, just greet everybody with a smile. And, uh, you know, that's what it's all about, helping people. So as long as I'm able, as long as God give me good help, I plan to stay in the game. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, listen, I want to thank uh, our county clerk for, for coming today for being a part of what's happening in our neighborhood. Hey, listen, there's a lot of things happening in our county clerk's office that, 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 you know, all of the records, all of the deeds and all that kind of stuff, that's where you take care of your business there. So I want to thank Carolyn Gidry for coming again, and I want to thank you for joining us today. Now, come back and see us on next time as we talk about what's happening in our neighborhood. So we'll see you next time on our broadcast.